Hello and welcome to Math Minecraft Computers episode I-21, the BCD display build in Minecraft. So today we're going to start actually building the BCD display that we designed in Logisim. Here's a quick look of it while I move over here. We'll be putting all these gates. Second thing that we're going to do is build instead of a 4-bit bus this time we're going to build a I've come over here pretty far I'm just gonna put a marker block down and just put it say about right here and this will be the edge so this will be the first of our bits that'll give us some build room on both sides of the bus when we lay the Minecraft wire down it's actually a block itself so you know we don't think of it like a block because it's so short but it really is it's sitting here on top of this block when we want to use the fill command, as which I'm going to use instead of actually hand building this bus. We want to actually put it not at this. If, if I target this block, I'll pop up the F3 here. I'm actually targeting the block in the ground. I want to target this block and you can see the coordinates on the right hand side. The first one is the left to right coordinate. So it's this way. So if you see if I move left and right, it's the one that changes. If I move forward and backward, it'll be the third coordinate, which is currently 26. You see it changes. We also had the X changing there, but there you see it. And then of course, top and bottom is if I start moving and pointing, you can see that's up and down. So what we want to do is we're going to clear this. I'm gonna put my first wire here. This will be the bit zero one or positive wire. So I'm gonna start right here. I'm gonna point at that block. I'm gonna pop up the fill command and start exactly where it is. So it's 143, 15, 26. Now I want to go 100 units forward. So which coordinate is that? We don't move left or right. We accept that. We don't move up or down. We take the 15. But here we add 100. 126. I'm going to put it. And then we write what we want to make there. And it's going to be Minecraft. Red stone wire. Like this. And there it is. So this will be the A positive. Then I skip a space. I do the same thing here. Okay, but I really don't have to move. All I need to do is pull this up and do a little math. So if we started at 143 and we want it two over 144, 145. So I make these two 145. And I get another wire. So here's our first one. So to make it completely obvious what we're doing here, I'll go ahead and I'll put the switch here, like this. There's the on-off for that one. That means we want to have the inverter here, like this. I should bring it this way. And you put the redstone torch that we're going to need right here. And then we get the redstone torch from our inventory. It's right here. And then we just connect these two with wire. Right here, like this. Okay, so now we're on or off. Now, we want to do the same thing, except this, of course, I'm going to label right here on this block, bit zero. If you like it that way, put a space in there. So this is zero, so we're gonna do the same thing seven more times to get eight, but I'm gonna do that quickly. And you can see that I'll be able to do it all from right here. I just keep changing this value to two more. So 147 to 147 is our next block and so forth. So let me get that done. All right, there we have it, an 8-bit bus. And this time you notice that I didn't put them underneath the negative lines or the not 
values, the inverted values, because that was to illustrate one was down and one was up. This was always the positive, that was the negative. We're going to leave them on the surface this time because I think we've got that down. Now we can put our repeaters in here um, going forward, but we'll do that as we build. So let's take a look real quick at our Logisim work and decide exactly what we need to do. So the first thing I'm going to do in Logisim is I'm going to make everything as small as I can, and I'll just let you see that fast speed so that uh, you don't have to follow, but this is exactly the steps that I take to get there with Logisim. Okay, now we've optimized. One of the things that we want to look at is we see how many spaces we need. We need one, two, three, four, five actually spaces for a wire, and then we're going to have another AND gate, and then we're going to have our OR gate. So AND gate, a two-piece AND gate, is actually only one wide. We need wire coming into it, that's one. The AND gate itself, two, and the wire coming out of it, three. And then we need another one, four. That means we need one, two, three, four, five, and then nine and ten. Between these AND gates here that are coming off the bus all the way to our OR gates, we need a ten different. Now, the other thing that I'm going to show you you can do in LogiSim is I'm going to delete all of these wires here, including our display. And the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and this is an output pin. And I'm going to put an output pin for each one of these. I'm going to label them the same. As the segment that they're attached to. So the A segment, the B segment, the C segment. Let me go ahead and do that. Okay, so now we have output pins A through G, one for each of the OR gates, and this is the segments of the seven segment. When you come over to LogiSim and you click over here on this. This is the circuits layout, and this is the circuits sub-circuit appearance. When I click here, this is what I get. So here's my input pins A, B, C, and D. Here are my output pins A through G. So just to make this a little bit easier, see I'm going to move the G, the F, and the E down here to show you that I can move these around where I want. And this is actually now something we can play somewhere else. I'm going to go here, I'm going to say add circuit. I'm going to call this the BCD display test. I click this and you'll see that now I get that circuit that I built. So these, double clicking there, you see this is what is contained inside of so now all I need to do is get an output. That's the circuitry that we built minus the display. So here's the A segment. Here's the B segment. Be set up correctly. Here's the B segment goes to here. The C segment goes to here. The D. got these wrong. Remember, that's the decimal. Always forget that. So this goes here. This goes here. The F segment. Goes there. And finally, the G segment. To make a change here, because I don't have room for the G segment. So what we will do is drag this down. One. Make room for it, and that's the G segment. Now we need our inputs. One input pin, two, three, and four. So these are represent our A's, B's, and C's and D bits, or bits in this case, whatever four we come up with, and then I just simply hook that up into our inputs. 
So there's A and B. C and D. Now it looks like I have an issue because I have one of the missing connections, which is right down here. This should go to here. Okay, so there's zero, one. Go to sim mode with the finger. One, two, just check them all. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So you see all of that circuit that we built. And this is now represented right here in this. So to, to do two of these, I can copy all of this and bring it over here. And now we have eight bits. So you want to put the number, let's say 32 in here. You put a three here and a two here. You want to put 74, we put a seven here and a four here. Get the uh, seven, 74. So whatever you want, you put here 16. There you go. You've got it. So this is our left four bits and this is the right four bits on our four bit bus in Minecraft. So now we move on to building this actually in Minecraft. You know that we've built the 8-bit bus. We run into something that's a little bit unusual versus Minecraft versus actually designing inside of Logisim. Now our bits are ordered from the right-hand side being the lowest order bit to the left-hand side being the highest order bit. So this would be bit 0, 1, 2, 3. We were doing that over here on our model because you stand in front of it and you set the bits. However, when you design in Logisim, you have this perspective. You're facing the other way and you're above. And so your lines come down like this. And then so you end up with this being the low order bit, bit 0, and this being the high order bit, bit 7. So you have to decide on which way you want it to be. If I set my bits this way, and I were going to put the number one on, then it would be this way. So I would set it here. But you see, we labeled this bit seven because we stand in front of it. And so while this seems to always make sense to me when I'm actually demonstrating or showing Minecraft, it doesn't make sense in Logisim when you're standing from the above perspective like this. And so you have to decide which one it is. And to make sure that Logisim and Minecraft match designs, so you can actually skid above your design and look and see exactly the way it should be, we have to adopt this method that you would set the bus bits and the bus from this side being bit zero to that side being bit seven, which is normal. But that also means then when you're standing in front of it like this, it's the opposite. So I'm going to pull these off and make that change. And really, pretty much from now on in our designs, we're going to be going the other way. And even though it doesn't necessarily make sense that I'm going to be moving, but you can think of it kind of like this, okay? So then when we stand on this side and we start numbering our bits, it makes sense. The difference is, when we were doing the other one, we were standing on the other side because we wanted to see the display. But we end up doing it exactly like this. And instead of standing in front of the bus to enter your numbers, instead you're going to stand basically on the bus and enter the numbers. So to me, it's kind of a little bit of a mind shift that you have to get in there. The reason that we would do it this way instead of the other way is because it allows us to look at our designs from above like this and be able to actually see them and they should match what we have in lighter sim if we did it the other way then the bits are in their own order now what we need to do is remember that we have 10 different spaces we determined inside of minecraft that we needed now space in minecraft is actually space for wire and that means you need two lines so i can't run a wire here without it connecting. So if I want it to parallel down this one, I have to move over to this one. So this would be where the next parallel wire would come in. The second thing we need is we need to make sure that we can bridge these. If I put an AND gate, let's say right here, like this, 
then when I connect it to this wire, I can't bridge over it. If I wanted to connect to this one, I have to build a bridge and come up and over like so, and now I'm no longer connected to my AND gate. So what we have to do is we make sure we have to have one more space here. So we would build an AND gate, and our first AND gate would look something like this. It would be right here. And here. So that would be our connection. See, now I have room to build a block here and bridge if I wanted to case a connector that one there. there. So that is actually where we want to put it. And that gives us room. So finish our AND gate. We are going to go ahead and put our torches on, just like this. And then you have a piece of wire sticking out here as well. So that is the minimum of an AND gate. Now, remember in our Lydison design that you can see here in the bottom left, I actually have five different wires that need to come down. over on the side coming out of the AND gate. And I have another AND gate. And so that AND gate takes three spaces, one, two, three, four total. And I have wires coming down here. So this would be our first parallel run. So there's, I'm gonna line them up with the bits. So there's wire one, wire two, wire three, wire four, wire five. And then I would have to also have room for an AND gate coming out. So there is the AND gate connection would be right here. This would be the AND gate body. This would be the torch and this would be the wire. So our OR gates start here. So that's kind of just a map of actually how we're going to end up doing this. These will be our any wires running parallel vertical connect to other gates. And then our AND gate has room here and then we have our OR gates up here. So that's how we're going to start doing this build. And now we just connect our wires up and build our gates exactly how we had. So let's start. What I want to do also is to make this clear that just like our Legisim, this is going to be the D wire. This is the C wire. This is the B wire. And finally, of course, this is the A wire. Now the reason for that is we actually have our two BCD numbers here. It's four bits per BCD number. So this is the right number, these four bits. And then these would be another A, B, C, and D here for the second. So we're gonna duplicate our circuit to do this. We're going to start just like this. So here, again, let me get this right. We have D, just like in our design in Logisim. Then looking at our design, you can see that our first gate is B, D, both B and D on. So I'm going to set that condition here. D is on and B is on just like this. All right now we just hook it up. So we need a B and a D. I'm gonna put the B right here. Coming off this one. So we are going to go all the way. Well, actually, you know what? This is where I decide that if I'm gonna stand in front of these and turn these on, I need some room. So we're gonna tear this down and I move the whole thing down a little bit. I think it's comfortable and easy to stand in this position to flip the switches. So we'll put our first AND gate right here because that gives us room. And I'm one off because I didn't give myself room. So we move our AND gate back a little bit to about this position. Our first AND gate is BD. So I'm going to label this the BD gate.
and bring our wire out of here for connection. It goes right there. So this is going to go to the B connection. Doesn't really matter, I can choose either. So go ahead and put it to B. So that's B. This is C. This is not B here, and this is B. So if you look right here, that is B. So this is our B connection coming into this gate. The B in the on position. You can see right here the signal dies because it's not strong enough, so we just add a repeater. I can't put it here, so I can't power that block down here. I have to put it back here. Alright, there's our B. Now our D is right here. So this is pretty easy. We just come up and create this little bridge. And we have our D connection. So that's our first gate, actually. That's our BD. Now, if you also notice in the larger sim, we don't use the BD anywhere else. It's only used for the A segment, so we don't need to do anything else. However, we do have to have a connection all the way from A. And I'm going to follow exactly my Ligosim map, so I'm going to put it in this area. You see I can't put it here because it connects up to those, so it goes right here. So this is going to be our A connection, A being on. So now I have to bridge all the way over to our last wire. So this is D. The two C wires are here. The B wires. And then finally you'll get to here, and you can see right here is the A on, is right there. We currently have A off, so we'll turn it on. Oh, that was B. There we go. A on. And we start our wiring. We need a repeater right here. As you can see, it is already lost power. All right, so there's our A connection coming in according to our map. And then our next one that we need is the not B, not D connection. And that's an AND gate. So we start it right here and build our gate. We will label this, it's good to label everything, not B, not D. To make it obvious, let's set our conditions. We want B off and D off. So there's D off and B is off. I'm also just going to turn A back off. So now we have everything off. So only the inverted wires are on right now, and we're going to be doing the same thing. Now this is going to be very simple because that's not D right there. So we just have to hook this up to the not B wire, which you can see comes right through here. So the not B is this one right here. And just, you know, the more careful you are when you do all this wiring, the less mistakes you will make, because you will make them. Then it just makes debugging easier. You'll find all your misconnections anyway, but you've got them. So here's all the first connections for our first gate. So these are what we need for the A segment leading to the OR gate. And we've decided that the OR gate is going to be along here. So let me just extend these out. And you see, I actually end up with a little bit of space here between these. And then my last connection for the A segment that we need is we need the C on. We will turn on C. That's the B. And here is the C. And so it's going to be a connection to this wire right here. We're going to leave space for it to come by that gate, so our connection will be in this location, right where we have a zero. 
The way we're going to handle this is I can't put a repeater here, because if I do, I can't connect to it from up here. So I have to make sure my repeater is before it. So that will be wire, this will be wire. And then we do our repeater right there. Now you see all these other lines have one more connection on them, that's okay. You work all that on the end. This is our last connection to the A segment. C on, so not D, D, not C, C. And now we're ready to build our R gate at the end. Now I'm just going to close up this distance on the OR gate, so I'm going to bring this one over here, just because I like to keep everything nice and neat. A couple of these gates we're going to use before both the not B, not D gate, which is this one right here, is going to be used. And as you can see, it is the third wire over in our map. We start down here. We have one, two, three. So that is in this position right here. So coming down this column is where we're going to want our connection from the not B, not D gate, which is right there. So what that means is we'll be building a bridge and we'll be running that this way. Where that connection goes up there and it will go that way as well. And then these we just need to bring in. We don't use the BD gate or any other segment. So this is what we need for our first A segment OR gate and it's going to come all the way out to here along this line. Just like this. It can be any size we need. Remember that an OR gate in Minecraft is actually just a connection of all the wires. I still build a physical gate with the blocks to make sure that we understand what it is. It also lets us label. So let me just bring all of these connections to here. And then we're going to wire along the top, connect them all together. And this then becomes our segment A gate. Bring the wire out of it anywhere. I'm just going to do it there for now. And click here and call this segment A. So that will be wired to our seven segment A gate. Get what we need. That is everything necessary for the A gate, which lets us move on to the B gate. If you look at the Minecraft, we start it in this area, so I'm going to just denote them and put my first AND gate right here. And then we can look at our logism and find that our first AND gate that we need for the segment B is not C, not D. Not C, not D. Not D is very easy, it's right here. Let's just go ahead and hook it up. And then let's also set those conditions over here. Not D is on. And of course, let's also make sure that C is off as well, which is right here. C is off, there's D, that's off. So coming back to here, we've already got the, the not D hooked up. Do you see it loses power right there? And all the wires will do that, except for the one that we've already done. So what we need to do is power all of these back up. And they'll all be the same. Except for this one, which we've already done. And I did that again. Missed the wire. Peter down there, all right. There we go. Those are all brought forward. That lets us connect to our not C using a bridge, which is right here. So pretty simple. Sure, you always gotta check. I sometimes forget the, the chunk of wire across the A the AND gates and 
That's never fun. So this then becomes the not C, not D gate. Not C, not D. And we also, looks like in the B segment, we need to go to the not B next. And that'll be a bridge too, and it'll be in this position. So I'm just going to set it right here and not B. Okay, there's the D wire and the C wires, and so not B is right here. You can look up to make sure, but there's A. I right, sorry, it's A here, B here. So not B is the one coming off the green inverted gate, so it's right here. So it's the one that's on. That is the connection to the not B wire input that we need. And then we have our last gate for this, which is the CD gate, which will start right here. All right, the CD gate. Both of them have to bridge. The C is going to come off of here. And this is the C on, so it's going to be this wire. And the D on as well, so we'll go make sure that we set those conditions. D on and C on. And we can come back here and look. And see that we've connected the D there and the nuts, or excuse me, C is here. And once again, we have a condition where we don't have enough power. So this has gone to the C, and then of course the D gate. We just come up and over one, and we reach the D. And we better turn the D gate on, although it's going to be, it is on. So it has died somewhere. It looks like it has died right here. So our repeater's in the wrong place. Now we've got it. And it comes up and it has enough power to get to our gate. So this then becomes our CD gate. And that gate is actually used as well. And it's used off this first connection that you see right here. So we'll build a bridge. And then wire it up. So it will be this way. Is as it will come this way. All right, B gate only has these three connections, the, the B uh, or gate. So I will extend this on out. here and put our gate here so there's one two and then our other connection will come in here now we just need to run all of these forward now you see we've lost power there I'm gonna put a repeater when you put a repeater right against the gate look what happens when I connect this up this wire is now powering this all the way back to here. You see if I break this, that's out because that condition is currently off. So when you do these repeaters on the end on an OR gate and they connect all up, you have to be careful that you don't. If I had, let's say, a branch running off this to another circuit somewhere, I would actually have activated that. Now you can always stop that by always putting a repeater on every connection in an OR gate. Now you can see it dies because you remember that a, a repeater is also an inverter. So that is one way you can do it. You can also just make sure in this connection you can see it dies right there. So it's really up to what you want. I think for clarity you'll find that when you're looking at your circuit from above that having a repeater for every one of these connections right here 
one that you see when, you, when you're checking out a circuit and you want to say, well, where's, you know, my connections? What lines are on, what lines are off? This makes it more clear. So I do recommend that as a practice that you go ahead and put a repeater at the end of every connection to your OR gates. Okay, and the CD, we've already bridged so we can bring this over anywhere to connect up to this. And look at that, it's perfect. So this then, gate, becomes our segment B gate. That is the OR gate for our segment B. And all I have to do is bring our connection out of here somewhere like this. And that is what we have. Now the only other thing that we have to do is make sure that we have power to all of these wires, which we will get later. But now if you look above here, and you look at our Logisim down below, they should be actually looking very, very similar. So here you have, for instance, our gates, our connection over to B, our connection to D, our connection to not B, and not B is there. You have this connection going all the way back to the A. And that's actually how you can do this. And that's why we line these bits up this way instead of the other way that we've been doing it. That helps out a lot. So what we'll be doing in the next ones is we'll be continuing to build the next three gates for the segments. So the segment C OR gate, segment D OR gate, and segment E OR gate, and all of the ends that go along with it. That will be I-22. We'll see you then. This is Imroy. Keep learning, have fun, and out.